That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid should come as no surprise, it is coming out of the state of Virginia. So for those of you who don't know, while we were away for the weekend, the Virginia, uh, Virginia Senate actually did pass the three gun control measures that they had been talking about. It was the one that spurred the whole big protest that happened on Martin Luther King Day weekend. But one of the things that irks a lot of people is that these are largely decisions that are not going to make a difference, that do not make sense. And if you know even the very bare-bones basics like me about firearms, you know that the people that are making these decisions are completely clueless about them, and they're making decisions, very uh, important decisions, that affect you, that affect your ability to defend yourself and to defend your family, despite knowing absolutely nothing about the subject matter. And just like you wouldn't want somebody that knows nothing about the subject matter making decisions on things like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, that sort of thing, for the same reason you wouldn't want somebody that knows nothing about the subject matter deciding whether or not you can or cannot exercise your religion or your freedom of speech or, for example, uh, going through your personal items with the Fourth Amendment, that kind of thing that, that protects you from unreasonable searches and seizures, you wouldn't want somebody doing that when it comes to the Second Amendment, especially when the things that they're talking about don't make any difference. And to kind of illustrate this, there was a video that was put out by the NRA, and this is representative, or sorry, they call them something different in, in Virginia, Delegate Mark Levine, no relation to Mark Levin, who appears on News Radio 1440, Mark Levine, and he's asked a very simple question a question that anybody that is integral to a bill like this or legislation like this, you would think that they would be able to, you know, answer that question because one of the pieces of legislation bans assault weapons and all the person in the audience ask him and you'll hear him ask the question, what's an assault weapon? And uh, I think you'll enjoy his response. Question from the audience. Please define assault weapon. Hunting weapons, weapons used for self-defense, weapons used for sports shooting, from weapons that are the, the preferred weapons for mass shooters. So what the bill does is it distinguishes basically the difference between guns that go like this. These are rifles. You use them to shoot an animal, and you can shoot very precisely. Mass shooters don't like things that go like this. So the mass shooters use guns that go like this. All right? things like that. And guns that go like this are widely inaccurate. That's why hunters don't like them. That's what these guns do. That's why they're so useful in the military. You want to mow down an approaching army. They're not useful in hunting. They're all shotguns, very powerful. You shoot a shotgun and it shoots some 40 pellets out. And if someone's coming to approach you and they, they face the end of a shotgun, they're in big trouble. In terms of the differences between the guns, the heart of the difference is how you hold the gun. It basically is a semi-automatic, meaning that you can shoot with each, each finger, not like a bolt action where you have to kick out the cartridges. It's none of those. It has to be semi-automatic. And it must contain one of these weapons of war type features. Things like a pistol grip, things like a flash suppressor, to, which basically conceals where the flash is coming from. Things like a silencer that's used in Virginia Beach to basically not show what, what the gunshots sound like. Or grab that red hot magazine, they take 10 magazines, they take their template magazine, they can shoot 10, then they have to take one to two seconds to change the magazine. If it's 100 bullets, they might have to take 10 to 20 seconds. I don't know about you, I spend more of that time in the traffic. The fact that gun owners may have to take 10 or 20 seconds more, so our, web, our bill allows people to keep their weapons, including their AR-15s and the like, they can keep their weapons, but we've asked them to do what people have done with machine guns when they were banned in 1934, to basically get a permit so we know where they are, so they aren't used by criminals. So that's Virginia Delegate Mark Levine. I want you to keep in mind, this guy is not a flunky. He's not some random Democrat that they pulled out of the Virginia delegation that was going to be voting on it to speak about this. The reason he was speaking at this event is because he is the sponsor of the bill. This is the guy that drafted the legislation that brought it before the House in Virginia 
He is the sponsor of House Bill 78. And he cannot define assault weapon despite the fact that he's the one that wants to ban them. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. It would be like asking my opinion on something that dealt with nuclear physics and I can't even define the thing that I want to get rid of and I say, well, it doesn't matter. I, I still think that we should pass this. And I'm the one leading the charge. <laughs> no, it's, it's too dangerous. We shouldn't. I'm not saying that the average person uh, should know everything about this. I'm saying, though, that if you are going to be somebody that is making laws that affects this, you need to have at least some basic level of expertise when it comes to these things. And he proves throughout this entire video, he knows absolutely nothing about guns. I mean, nothing. I was astounded by the fact you would think by sheer probability he would occasionally get something right. The only thing where he kind of came within the realm of being correct is where he talked about how powerful shotguns are, which they are. And it's also very odd that despite the fact that they're the ones that are by far more deadly and he seems to understand that that is the case, that he's not talking about banning shotguns, which is strange <laughs> considering he's talking about how deadly they are. And yet that's not the one he wants to ban. He wants to ban rifles. But anyway, and, and pistols, by the way, because this legislation has to do with that as well. So let's real quick go through point by point several of the different things. And I'm not going to go into everything because I've covered most of this ground before. But uh, point by point, I'm going to go through just a handful of things that he got completely wrong. First of all, there is a myth that has been going around and has been for a very long time that AR-15s are the preferred weapons of mass shooters. And you heard him in that clip right there. He was trying to perpetuate this myth as well, saying, you know, we're trying to get rid of specifically the guns that mass shooters like. Mass shooters don't like rifles that go like this. They like pistol grips. All right, well, here is a graphic, and, and the source here is the FBI crime statistics. This shows a breakdown by weapon of all of the different weapons that are used in active shooting events between the years 2000 and 2015. Now, as you can see, when you talk about a weapon that is preferred by mass shooters, the overwhelming majority, over 56%, handguns, pistols. And then you have 27% for uh, rifle, 14% for shotgun, and then 3% that they're not sure. But now I want you to consider this as well. That 27% for rifles, that's all rifles. That's not rifles specifically with pistol grips. That's not specifically AR-15s. That's not semi-automatic rifles. It's just rifles. That includes all of them. Which means if even 1% of those rifles happen to be non-pistol grip, that it's even less than what that chart shows. Now, why would the FBI not record whether or not their pistol grip rifles or semi-automatic rifles or just, you know, a, a bolt-action rifle or a lever-action rifle or, or something that you would think of that would, you know, it's older, it's, it's something that you have to actually, it's, it's double action for you to be able to fire off a shot because it doesn't matter to the FBI. They're not tracking it that specifically because it bears no significance in trying to stop mass shootings, and the FBI knows that. There isn't a discernible pattern that would lead them to believe that looking at that and having that data would make them somehow more efficient at stopping mass shootings because there are people that use non-semi-automatic rifles in mass shootings. And like I said, pistols are by far the overwhelming weapon of choice when it comes to mass shootings anyway. So not only are rifles with pistol grips specifically not the choice of mass shooters, rifles as a whole aren't even the choice of mass shooters by a wide margin. And another thing where he said that it was just utterly stupid was that, oh, well, you see, um, when, you're, when you're hunting, you want something that goes like this, which I've done this before. Second Amendment's not about hunting, so that's a non-argument. Um, you can look at, there, there's nothing, no indication whatsoever that the founders were writing the Second Amendment I mean, it's actually in the Second Amendment what they wrote it for. They actually give a qualification there. But hunting is, is not an issue in this at all. It's certainly a good thing that you can do with your gun. 
but it's not the reason we have a Second Amendment. It's a non-starter when it comes to an argument. But what he's saying is the reason that hunters, like your standard grip, where your grip is sort of integrated with the butt of your, um, or the stock of your, your firearm, they, they want one where the grip is more like this, as opposed to a pistol grip that usually is added on underneath the firearm. He's saying that that makes it less accurate. So what I did was, because again, I'm, I'm just, I don't have a lot of expertise on guns. I've just studied it a little bit, certainly more than this guy. But uh, I went and looked at the most popular military sniper rifles. So these are specifically sniper rifles, the ones that are the most accurate, the ones that militaries around the world choose when they need to be the most precise. Because of course, snipers aren't mowing down armies or anything. They're specifically taking out targets. So out of the top 10, these are all the rifles that militarytoday.com listed as their most popular sniper, sniper rifles. And let's see, we've got number one, number four, number 10, and an honorable mention. Oh, look at that. All with pistol grips. And remember that the number one, the most popular rifle used in the American military, the Barrett M82, is a sniper rifle with a pistol grip. So the idea that that is somehow uh, the pistol grip makes it less accurate or something, that's stupid. Anybody that's fired any of these guns or, or fired any gun with a pistol grip versus one that has the stock integrated with the grip will tell you that it doesn't make a significant difference when it comes to your accuracy. And here is the rest of the list from military today on the most popular sniper rifles. Now you will notice here that there are a few that do not have pistol grips or sorry, none of these actually have pistol grips, but every single one has a feature integrated into the stock that makes you hold it more like a pistol grip. So in other words, you have either a thumb hole or the stock is designed in such a way where you hold the grip more vertically than horizontally, which is what, Representative Mark Levine was trying to say, he's like, well, you know, you, you can only be accurate if you're holding it up like this as opposed to down here like this. Well, no, each of those guns, even the ones that don't have pistol grips for snipers, they have something that more resembles that. And if you watch movies like American Sniper, for example, you'll notice that the weapon of choice for Chris Kyle had a similar function. His rifle actually had a thumb hole and you held it upright like this. It's not a pistol grip because it's integrated with the stock, but it's a very similar method of holding it. The assertion that holding a gun a certain way makes it more deadly is just stupid. It is almost a purely cosmetic effect, and it certainly does not make a gun more effective at committing mass shootings. The whole idea that a purely cosmetic, that would almost be like saying, well, it's not a race car until you, you paint a racing stripe on it. See, because that's the purpose of a racing stripe is so you know that it's a race car. And once you paint the, the racing stripe on the car, well, then it's a race car. No, that has nothing to do with the engine or the functionality of the vehicle itself. I mean, you couldn't take somebody's VW Beetle, paint a racing stripe on it, and all of a sudden it can compete with the cars in NASCAR. That's not how this works. But that's essentially the argument that Mark Levine just made for it. Another thing that's really funny is that he doesn't even realize, even with his extreme lack of knowledge on the subject matter, that even by his own logic, he's still contradicting himself. Because one of the points that he tries to make is, we're not banning guns, they can keep their guns, they can keep their AR-15s, all we're asking them to do is what happened back in the 1930s when we banned machine guns, and basically tell them that they have to get a permit for that. So you're telling us you don't want to ban guns, you just want to make it like machine guns, which we banned. You see, without knowing it, he kind of bleeds his hand there. That's the ultimate long-term goal for Democrats. They want guns to be banned. They want guns to be just like machine guns, where you have to be literally a millionaire just to be able to afford the permits and to be able to have them and, and use them as sport shooting or as some kind of hobby instrument. That's what they really want, because you can technically legally own a machine gun in the United States of America, 
it's just pretty much impossible unless you're a millionaire because of how expensive the the papers are to, to get them done, how expensive it is to actually register yourself, and then how expensive it is to buy the guns because they're incredibly expensive because nobody's making them anymore, so there's a short supply and a high demand. Well, that's actually what they want for all firearms. And he basically, without knowing it, just admitted to it there on camera. And the thing is, the only way to make that work would be to do exactly what happened with machine guns, and that is to start a registry. So we're not coming for your guns, but we're totally coming for your guns, and we're going to need you to sign a permit so we know where those guns are. That only works if there is a registry. And registry is always the first step to full-on gun confiscation. That's what happens every time. And not to mention the fact that if a gun registry were put in place, it would completely defeat the purpose of the Second Amendment, which is to defend the American people and their rights against a tyrannical government. Well, if the government knows where all the guns are and what their functionality is, all they have to do is go round them up before they start being tyrannical. That's why a gun registry completely breaks the purpose of the Second Amendment. It would be the same thing if we decided that we had to license journalists and license news companies before we allowed them to just say anything they wanted to. Well, that would defeat the purpose of free speech. It's free speech as long as we get to decide who's speaking and what they say. Well, what you're saying isn't free speech then. And that's exactly the same thing that's going on here. What they're talking about is not being able to own, to keep and bear your firearms. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.